Welcome to Fairy Tale Access, where the head fairy's quest is to prove that fairy tales do exist in actual time rather than once upon a time. Together, we will unravel the heroes, young and old, who turn dreams into reality. These are the people who still believe in happily ever after. The discoveries will bend even our most cynical non-believers into believing in fairy tales. Welcome to Fairy Tale Access. Today, we're going to get some secrets into the secret sanctuary by T.L. Shively. It's an exciting book. Demigods, everything's going on in this book. How are you? Thank you for joining us by Skype from Michigan. Thank you very much for having me. I'm doing good. How about yourself? Excellent. That looks like a scene I read about behind you. Did you create Act that? Actually, um, a fellow author made it for me. I, it is a scene from the book three. So from book three. Um, okay. Yep. Yeah. But as you can see in their hands is the crims they use in the book. So <laughs> that a little bit of chaos. Mm-hmm. I, I like chaos. So when I looked at the book cover, it started to remind me of the secret garden. And then when I started to read it, it really reminded me of Percy Jackson, but on a different level, like, okay, so this is okay because there has to be more than one school, you know, kind of like Harry Potter. There was more than one wizarding school, and it was just so well done, and oh, it's exciting for young adults. Exciting for an adult. <laughs> I read it, I read it, I think it was, just took me a little over a day. That's me when I read it. When you're getting something you like, it's hard to put it down. <laughs> Oh, this was extremely hard to put down because they're young kids, they're high school students. You want to see what's going to happen next. You want to see how their talents are going to develop, whether or not they're going to be friends with other people, um, getting over those differences or perceptions. You did that so well. So you're an award-winning author. How many books have you written all together? Uh, I have got... Five total in the Sanctuary Garden series, which includes a short story. And then in November, I just released a new book in a different series, actually. How many series have you written? Well, I just started with this series, the Sanctuary Garden series. And then this book I just wrote and published, I wasn't for sure if I was going to make it a series, but I kind of got a unanimous vote from my readers and everything that yeah I need another book <laughs> this is okay well who am I to argue wow how long have you been writing for oh my god I I've honestly I've wrote most of my life it's just I never really thought you know I'm like I can I got all these stories and nobody's gonna want to read them and I got told one day I'm like well it was at one of my past jobs this they had made the comment and I Made the same thing where nobody's going to want to read it. He goes, well, not if you don't write it. <laughs> so I finally says, okay. And I took me 10 years to get out the book that's on your desk. 10 years for the Secret Sanctuary? To get it completely. And um, yeah, it, it was a while. <laughs> It was so well spun and the cover really drew me in because there's so many hidden elements, just like you did with the story. You're really good about hiding these little twists and turns in there. And it, and it just like all comes together and you're like, yes, I'm like I want to be their friend. <laughs> <laughs> well, the characters in this book were actually I created them when I was in like third grade because I grew up in country with no friends around and they kind of were my friends. So 
they evolved with me as I grew up and they just finally got their own book. What about all the elements that go into the book and their special abilities? Where did you come up with that or why did you lean the way you went? Um, with the elements, that one was, it was like IQ because he was smart. He got the electricity and I just, you know, there's so much you can put with electricity. So, and I just, to me, it went with him. Honestly, they just kind of fell together for me. It's weird. <laughs> well, what about the, would, go ahead. I was going to say like with Cole, he's just, you know, a ladies man show off. And I mean, to me, fire just went with him. <laughs> I know that you were so good about bringing out those elements without overly doing them. That was fun to do. And it, there was a few times I had to go, okay, nope, I cannot do that. And I didn't want them to just, you know, all of a sudden they're bad at, you know, with the powers. I'm like, no, that's just not right. <laughs> they need to, I wanted it to be as realistic as fantasy could get. Oh, I definitely think you did that. And I love the way you had all the little twists that came up and these little unexpected things that totally made sense after they were fully divulged. Yep, yeah, I, I like my fantasy as a twist, which is why I put that in my logo, fantasy as a twist. I don't want to read and expect the thing. You know, when you read a book, you go, oh, this is going to happen. Oh, this is going to happen. I don't want that. <laughs> so I try not to. But you also don't want it too unbelievable as well. So it's a little. No, you found the perfect balance. It was well, completely believable. I definitely want to be one of those kids. And <laughs> or just, you know, part of that group. It was great. And just, you know, finding friends where you least expect. Back to it, or the mm -hmm. finding the kind of friends that you really wanted on your side that you didn't know you did. <laughs> Those two, but a lot of these guys, you know, they've known each other for a long time and they just always had each other's back. Those are the kind of friends that you're really looking for. Yes. So I thought it was really good. It was a it included the story about friendship, about overcoming misconceptions, getting along with others, you know, and finding yes. ways to like people, but accepting responsibility for your mistakes as well. That's a big one. Yes. And I'm, I'm very glad you got that out of the reading because I, I wanted to put, like you said, little tidbits like that in there. But you don't want it so in somebody's face that you're preaching to them. Exactly. And I don't think you did that at all. It was really amazing hey. how you twisted it in. Just that you brought out the whole conflict and everything that happened because of the choices that were made. But, you know, you also didn't damage them so badly that they were not redeemable. Uh, that was the goal. <laughs> exactly. I, I just, I wanted something different. And that's what I try to put in my writing. No, it was definitely different. And there was magic everywhere. There's got to be magic. <laughs> I love magic. <laughs> I love fantasy. When I read, I read to escape. So when I write, I write hoping that's what my readers can get out of my writing. Well, I think they'll get that. I think it also helps young people that may be reading it to open their mind to new experiences, to, you know, what other people think about things or how things affect other people differently. You know, like, you know, being an avid swimmer and somebody else not being as good a swimmer. Um, just all those different balances that you were able to achieve. It's incredible. Well, thank you. Yeah, I didn't want to have characters who were good at every little thing because nobody is good at every little thing. You gotta have the flaws 
you've got to have the good things, but flaws are not necessarily bad things. Flaws can elevate the good things, and they're just part of life. You don't have to be perfect. That's true. So tell me a little bit about the magic that you incorporated into the whole storyline, because whatever they used on the couch to avoid stains, I want that. <laughs> oh, yeah, I would love that as well. <laughs> when I'm, I was writing, I just I wanted I kind of wanted a mixture in sanctuary of sci fi with the fantasy world, um, you know, like the elves and all that. And to me, when it's, I'm like, that would be something so cool. <laughs> and yes, I would love it too. That would be just awesome. That furniture that never got dirty, especially as pristine white as it was. <laughs> I know the whole place looks, well, it sounded so relaxing, but I think that as a reader, we start to imagine it in our mind. Yeah. And I try not to put too much description in for the fact that, I mean, if you over describe things, you all, anybody who reads something, they see something different. So I tried to put just a little bit of description and let them use their own imagination to do more. And what about world building? What places did you choose to create the world that you built around these kids? Honestly, the world I built for these kids came more out of TV. Um, like when I watched Hercules, the legendary journeys is where I started with thinking about the world with, for them. And I want, at first I wanted to put them in a Mount Olympus, but I didn't know enough to do it. So I says, okay, I brought them more over into the States where I know. And I just, I created sanctuary from my own mind on that one. What I would want, what I wanted there. Um, a mixture of stuff I enjoyed. Were there any particular places that you've traveled to or from Michigan that you think influenced how you portrayed the area? Um, well, there was one park in Michigan. I cannot think of the name. It's got uh, stone bridges and all that. And as I was walking around there, I was seeing a little bit of the world and sanctuary like the bridge over the water and i'm like yeah, I'm going, hmm, lava and <laughs> where my mind went nice little obstacle course form what about when you were younger did you go to summer camp a lot i never went to summer camp i never did i i've always thought about it and i always thought it was cool but i never did go yeah i was more of a home buddy, I guess. <laughs> Put me in front of a book and I'm a lot better. What about now? Do you have children? I have three boys and they went to summer camp. Uh, one boy did and he enjoyed it. But they they were they're kind of like me. They're more into fantasy, reading, games. Wow, it's, it's not it's a really summer. Sports. It's a <laughs> it's a summer camp we all want to go to, though. <laughs> and there you go. That would be it. Because yeah, that would be the summer camp. I have a feeling if I had one like that, I'd sign up in a heartbeat. <laughs> Definitely. So, what about the crystals that came into play? Why were they such an important element in the story? Crystals. When I was creating, I, I like crystals. I, re, I like crystals. I like the magic. And I was actually looking through Google and I was trying to come up with so long ago. And I just, it seemed like crystals portrayed a lot in the magic field. And I just wanted to do a little spin on them. Because, I mean, usually crystal colors mean something. The types of crystals mean something. And I just... I didn't want to do what everybody else was doing with them, so I created my own little spin with the crystals. And I have fun with them. <laughs> yes, you definitely have fun with them. And blowing things up. You have a propensity to blow things up. Mm, just a little bit. <laughs> just a little. 
I want excitement, you know, just. Well, I thought it was exciting. I love the um, the way other characters came into play. You know, some were really mysterious. Some were really aggravating. <laughs> <laughs> I you know? told that. <laughs> and some were, um, you know, and other adults in your life, you know, their behavior was questionable. Just like, it, you know, it was more like real life. Thank you. That's pretty much what I was trying. I wanted it, some real life into it. You got to have some good to bad and not everybody's perfect. <laughs> no, but in the long run, it was good to, you know, keep an open mind because of the way things played out and what you found out later at the appropriate time. Like knowing too much information sometimes isn't going to help you get to your goals faster or achieve them. Sometimes it's and like they, you have to work through it and then it mm -hmm. comes together and the final clue gets put in place. And they, yeah, and they find out more with each book as they move forward. Um, and I, I'm still got another one coming out. I don't know the exact number that I will be releasing. That hasn't been revealed to even me yet. <laughs> So really, you don't know how many are in the series? How many will there be at least in the series? At least, I'm going to say there's going to at least be seven books for sure. Seven for sure? Seven for sure, and probably more. I just, I'm not quite sure yet. I was just trying to get the information out there, and like you said, not too much too quickly. Well, tell me about... a. The Town That Time Forgot. That is book two. That is when the Guardians start to realize there's a lot more to their story than what they were told in book one. So book one looks so bright and hopeful. <laughs> and then book two is a little <laughs> dark. Just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. And it's a dragon. Yeah. Yes, I I love dragons, and I'm um, when I first wrote the book, there the story, there was to be dragons more in it, and then I it just it changed for me as I write some things change, and I'm like okay, and I kind of follow through with it, but there I knew there was going to be a dragon in the series, and in book two you get to meet the dragon, and there's a little twist about him at the end as well, oh, me and my twist. All right, what's after that one? You got the bat, the Battle of Sleeping Lady. Oh, yeah, that looked intriguing. Now, that one takes place in Alaska. Oh. I actually went to Alaska. My dad and stepmom lived there. Mm -hmm. So I went there, and the Sleeping Lady is an Alaskan lore. Uh, and you'll find out in the book, it does tell about that. So I decided to bring it to life a little bit. And. Oh, that sounds great. <laughs> it, it was. I really, I love up there and I was able to bring it into the story. And I was even out on Prince William Sound. And as we were out there, I'm looking around all these islands and I'm like, wow. I just, I saw the Alaskan sanctuary there. So it really inspired me, and I wrote that book. And then while I was writing that book, I came up with a short story that came next, even though it took place before the first book. It, it, you better to read it after this battle for Sleeping Lady. So Battle Sleeping Lady. <laughs> so they both take place in Alaska, and the cover of my short story is an actual uh, picture that was taken in Alaska. That's actually book four. I didn't have one for my short story to send you, unfortunately. Oh, no. Um, but that one was uh, taken by my stepmom of the Independence Mines. So that's where my short story takes place. Oh, but the Independence Mines could have showed up in book one from some of the scenes that happened there. 
<laughs> well, the, there's actually a, co- a place called the Independence Mine in Alaska. So the name of the short story is the Independence Mine Disaster. And if you, Claw is actually the star of that one. So, I mean, if you got anything from him in book one, he's good for a disaster. <laughs> what happens in The Hunter's Betrayal? It's that really, is the last book. Really good artwork. Did you have the same Thank person you. do all the same artwork for you? Yep. Uh, Cream of Creation, she has done all the Guardian books for me. And she asked me what I want, and we go through them. And I wanted that rose on there, so she put that on there for me. And in the Hunter's Betrayal is where they go to Illinois, and I was actually there. So, and I was kind of looking around, and in that book, as I was, we were driving by a, not a cornfield, but um, they had a railroad cart. In the middle of the cornfield, that ends in the middle of the cornfield. And I saw that and I'm going, okay, well, there came the inspiration for the entrance to the Rogue Hunters, who is an offshoot, offshoot of the sanctuary. And so that inspired that one. And I we were actually going to a Comic Con, which is also in The Hunter's Betrayal as well, because <laughs> I do like Comic Con. So. so that's the latest book, and they learn more secrets. Uh, with every book, they learn a little bit more. In The Hunter's Betrayal, they learn something that really bothers them. So, but you kind of got to read to figure that one out. <laughs> oh, that sounds wonderful. It was just so much fun to read. I really enjoyed it. Like, all of that. Well, thank you. I am very glad. It's, that's my goal with my writing. I just, I want somebody to read it, be entertained. I lose yourself for a little bit. Yeah, I and definitely And if it inspires... <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> and I lost and, a know, little sleep. Sorry. You lost... <laughs> was, oh, I'm sorry about that one. I've, I've done it before. Sure, sure. <laughs> it's exactly what you intended, but it was really wonderful. So growing up, what was your favorite book of all time? Okay, now growing up, this one might be a little bit funny, but The Monster at the End of This Book by Grover, <laughs> the uh, Sesame Street one, has always been my favorite. I read it and I love reading it to little kids. So, <laughs> but if you want to go maybe on a little bit more adult, I did like Charlotte's Web. Oh, I did like Charlotte's Web too. That I one did was. like that one. So what is your other career or do you have another career besides writing? Uh, yes, my daytime job, which right now takes up a lot of my time. I work in construction construction sales. That must be tough. Well, I'm oh, pretty we, much, we work at a uh, drywall yard, so it's not too bad, and I'm more administrative than anything, and I'm very good at doing that. But you're still dealing with guys, so that makes a lot of sense with the way the characters are and the strong female leads and how they handle the guys and react to them. Oh, yes. very cool. Yep, and I hold my own with the guys in the business, and they respect me, and I don't have a problem. And I think you wrote a lot of that into your characters, too. There's more respect for women. There's um, women knowing how to react when boys or men say things that, in a way that could be misconstrued. Or not misconstrued, but I thought their reactions to those type of incidences was really well done and realistic. I, I'm glad, definitely, because that's it, it. It's like I said, I I strive for as much realism as I can put into the fantasy, and I want to be respectful with everything I write, but realistic. 
Yeah, I think it gives people choices and options of ways to deal with things differently. I really love the way that whole thing came out. It would make an awesome movie. <laughs> oh, well, they, I, I, I keep hearing that, and I'm like, well, I, I wouldn't complain. <laughs> well, now you just have to write a screenplay. Now that I've not done, and I have no idea how to. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost the same way, I think, I suspect. But seriously, well done, enjoyable, action pack. Heroes, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta have some heroes. Crushable heroes as well. Oh, definitely crushable. And cute relationships <laughs> with the other, you know, fantasy realm characters. Yeah, um, I mean, that's why I didn't want them to be just a side thing. I wanted them to have a part in it, but, you know, I wasn't trying to be too much. I was trying to do an even balance. I think you achieved that. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Well, thank you for sharing so much about yourself and how you developed this wonderful series. We're looking forward to seeing where you go with it. Well, thank you. I'm looking forward to that as well. <laughs> I got a lot of options out there, and I'm hoping to explore them all. Well, we can't wait. Until next time, keep asking questions. And if you want a really great escape for a young person, the starting with the secrets, the secret sanctuary. We'll see you soon. <laughs>